hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're taking a look at scorch markers. Well, I'm like a kid in a candy store today because a little while ago on the show, uh, while I was doing one of my scale model builds, I did some laser engraving and I had a viewer ask me, hey, Kenny, you ever use scorch markers? And if you have, what do you think of them? And I gotta be honest with you, I'd never heard of these things. So I Googled it and I looked it up and I checked out their website and I did something that I have never done before. And I contacted the company and said, hey, this is my name, this is uh, my channel, I've got this many subscribers. I don't know if it's something you do, but could you maybe shoot me some markers for me to play with on the show and I can show people what they do? And I didn't hear from them for quite some time and I kind of wrote it off. I figured they would just tell me to stuff it in my hat. But then a little while later, I got an email from them and a little while after that, <laughs> Kenny gets himself an envelope with some goodies inside. So let's head over to the bench and let's see what Scorch Marker sent me out. So one of the things that they sent along uh, was these stencils and you can adhere these to your projects and then by using the scorch markers in the stencils you can duplicate this um, with the scorch marker. As well they sent out this kitchen set, the kitchen stencil set for different items that you might have in your, in your kitchen. But this is the meat and potatoes of what they sent me along and they sent along three, which I was very surprised and pleased with, three Scorch Marker Pros and as well um, a Scorch Marker 2 millimeter pen. And this stuff is kind of cool. So if you guys don't know what Scorch Markers are, essentially they are an alternative to wood burners or to laser engravers. But if you're in the market for some fun craft burning on some wood, this may be right up your alley. And that's what we're gonna test. So we're gonna start off with one of these uh, Pro Scorch Markers. And on one end, it has a marker. And on the other end, it has a brush. So let me get a piece of scrap wood and I'll show you the gist of how you use one of these. So as I said, we're gonna try the Scorch Marker Pro and the first thing you wanna do is you wanna give this a good shake. Okay, so once you have it shaken up, you need to prime this. So what you're gonna do is it's spring loaded here on this tip. So I have it on a piece of paper towel and we're just going to, can you see that there how I'm just depressing that and allowing the liquid. You can see it's kind of a red liquid there and it's starting to saturate into the tip. So this is really important. You want to prime this tip to make sure that it is completely saturated with that liquid. All right, there we go. I'm pretty happy with that. So at this point now, I just want to try some freehand stuff on the wood itself. So let's just start off with the name of the show. I don't even know what I'm going to do here. So we'll just give it a little draw. All right. And we're going to let this dry. Well, in order to bring the scorch marker to life, because let's face it, the red isn't exactly pretty, you need a heat source. So guys, you need something that will go up to, I believe, at least 350 degrees. So I have my heat gun and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna crank this thing up to high and we're just gonna gently pass it back and forth over top of the letters that I've marked. Personal experience will dictate that these things will burn the surface of the wood. So keep it moving, keep it constantly moving and you won't have an issue with it burning your stock. Okay, that's pretty cool. That burnt that in there really, really well. All right, so freehand is a very cool thing. Let's try, let's try one of the stencils and see how that works out. But you know what, before I do that, I just wanna try a bit of an experiment. We have a little bit of running here and I think it's because I have excess um, liquid in the tip. So let me just try something here. We're going to really dry that tip up just to 
have it so it's not so saturated. And we're gonna do the exact same thing right here, but we're going to do it where I've kind of um, dried out the tip a little bit. There we go, just like that. So let me hit that with the heat gun and see what kind of results I get from that. Okay, there you go guys, live and learn. Um, practice, that's what this is all about. We can see here when I had a lot more of the scorch marker liquid on the tip, look at the running here, the bleeding that goes into the grain of the wood. Way too much in the tip of the marker, 100% user error on my part. Dried it out a bit, went really easy on the amount of liquid, and look at that. Look at how nice and clean that printing is there on the cut above. That looks fantastic. So, less is more in this case. Um, the more you heat it, the more it burns in. That is really nice. I really like the way that does it. So, let's try one of the stencils here. I really want to see how that works out. Well, at this point, I have a piece of poplar. And again, I've prepped it as uh, suggested with 220 grit sandpaper. And I have one of these little sunflower stencils. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to peel off the backing and we are gonna lay this down on our wood. And I'm gonna start from the middle and we're gonna rub this down, kind of going out in circles. Gonna get all the bubbles out of there, make sure that it lays down nice and smooth. This is a really thick vinyl stencil. Uh, it's, uh, it's not your small, cheaper variety of stencil, that's for sure. It's very, very thick, I like it. Okay, so we're gonna rub this down really, really well. And now, once you get it rubbed down and you're happy with the way that your stencil is adhered to your wood, there's actually a transfer paper on top of here, um, which is clear. So you're going to need to peel that off because that will expose, of course, your wood in the cutout areas. And we will very carefully pull this off. Look at that. That comes off really clean, really nice. Now that sunflower is really well stuck on there. Now, learning what we learned from our other applications, I'm really going to go sparingly on the scorch marker. I'm gonna give it another little prime, and I know that that's putting more in there than what I want, but then I'm just going to dab it clean. See, I've taken the majority of it out of there. And we're just gonna color very lightly. And even this may be too much. I'm not very experienced with the scorch marker. What you're seeing today is my first experiences with it, so I may still be applying too much of the product. So we may still get a little bit of bleed. So this is something that you want to experiment with as you use your scorch marker to, uh, to see what the wood looks like with less of the liquid on it, what it looks like with more. You get a pretty good idea after using anything uh, what works and what doesn't. So we're almost done. We're gonna color in these last bits and then we're gonna peel off our black stencil. And now at this point, we're gonna apply the heat gun and see what kind of results that we get. I think, as I said, where I started here, I think we've got some bleeding there. Too much material in the marker. Again, user error. But the rest of it, let's see how we do. Now, just like I thought, we do have a little bit of bleeding there. But guys, as someone that does wood burning, um, I can tell you, Let's see if there's a way that we can fix that. I'm pretty sure there is. This is not a deep burn. And I know that when we do wood burning, if we have a problem with a piece that we burned, you can very easily, using a utility knife or an X-Acto blade, you can very easily use the tip and lightly scrape. You've seen it in some of my wood burning tutorials before. Just lightly scrape away the surface, just like that. And check that out. We have completely cleaned up this edge here. We'll do the adjacent piece uh, beside it so that we can show you here. So just light scraping. 
you're not trying to carve away a lot of the wood here. You're just trying to take away a little bit of the burn. And look at that. Look at how nice and clean we've made that now, just with a little bit of scraping. So if you have a little bit of user error, like what I've done here, the Neanderthal in me, adding more material than I need, uh, if you have that problem, you can clean it up very, very easily and get those nice crisp lines. But ideally, it's probably better not to have so much of the fluid in the marker's tip when you're using it. So that takes practice, that takes experience as you get better at using these markers. So do practice pieces, guys, and uh, get the results that you want with these. Well, for those of you that are regular viewers here on the show, you will remember my excavator build um, where I did custom laser embellishments on the side and they turned out amazing. So I'm just wondering if we can duplicate this with the scorch marker. So what I have done is I've actually taken my original file that I designed and I have converted it to an SVG file, imported it into Cricut Design Space and then cut it out using my wife's Cricut cutter out of cheap vinyl. In essence, I've made my own stencil, much like the scorch marker stencils, except this vinyl is a lot thinner than what scorch marker uses. Now guys, in order to duplicate, say, your own transfer paper, because you'll need it for sections like that A, and it just helps to keep things neat, you can use a poor man's transfer paper. Press and seal works just fine. So we'll just take a little section of press and seal. We're gonna lay it down over top of our vinyl. And we're gonna rub that down. All right, so we'll just peel off this stencil. And I have a piece of poplar that I've sanded to the 220 grit and we're just going to lay our stencil down and rub it down in place. And once you've got your stencil how you want it, we can peel off the press and seal. Like I said, it's a cheap man's transfer paper. And there we go. There is our stencil. So guys, I'm excited to try this. Um, we're going to get as much of the liquid off of this scorch marker as we absolutely can. And we're going to do um, a rubbing here all the way through to get the stencil completely filled in. Guys, I think at the end I was really getting into the groove there and getting a good pattern. Uh, not so much coloring like what I was here. You can see that I've got too much of that um, of the liquid in there. But with these ones over here, just a quick swipe across to fill in the stencil. And I think that worked out well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna peel off this stencil and we're gonna hit it with a heat gun and see how we make out. Uh, this is a total experiment on custom stencils. So hopefully we'll get some good results. Wow, guys, that's amazing. <laughs> Look at how great that turned out. That's incredible, my gosh. This was an experiment, but what a win. This is a total win. Guys, if you don't have a laser engraver and you want to add embellishments to your projects, look at how gorgeous that is. That's incredible. And there you have it, scorch markers. Guys, I don't know what to say. I am honestly surprised. Um, I'll be 100% honest and say I was kind of skeptical. I was kind of skeptical. I don't know. I, thinking, you know, you get this little marker and you apply heat and it does wood burning. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's going to work and it's going to work well. Well, you know what? I have to eat my words because Scorch Marker works. This stuff is incredible. Um, it takes a bit of getting used to. It does take some practice. You need to really get your te technique honed in there. And But by the end, after the few burnings that I did, I was able to know how much I was laying down as far as the liquid goes. 
How much was too much? How much was, hey, that's going to bleed. I got to be careful of that. Uh, it's, it's a learning process, but if you pay attention while you're using the marker, there's no reason that you can't get great results. One of the things that absolutely blew my mind, I can't believe it, is this. My design for the uh, cat road grader build that we did. Um, I mean, this thing rivals the laser engraving. Uh, the difference between the two is the laser engraving is very sharp, very crisp, very, uh, very deep. It's a deep, deep burning. So it's a little bit of a different type of burn. But the Scorch Marker did an incredible job of duplicating that. It doesn't have the depth, but it has the crisp edges. And it really did a fantastic job. I'm so pleased about that. Why? Because Scorch Marker opens up an entire world to all of you out there uh, that follow the show and that love the model builds where maybe you can't afford that couple thousand dollars for the laser engraver. But I bet you you can afford to get the Scorch Markers and make your own templates, make your own stencils and Practice your technique and get your scorch marker to burn those accents into your projects and give them that extra life. It's incredible. I love this. Now, that sunflower there that we did, or was that a sunflower? Is it a daisy? I'm not a gardener. This isn't a gardening show. So that flower. <laughs> now, that was one of my first attempts other than the freehand, and I had way too much liquid. That's user error. That is not... Uh, a slight on the scorch marker at all because once I got that under control it really is a fantastic product but keep in mind as well just like I showed you if you have issues with bleeding through the grain of the wood which is going to happen from time to time you can clean it up with a craft knife or an exacto blade just by scraping away a tiny bit of the surface these burns are not deep enough that it takes a ton of scraping. You're not going to lose a lot of surface area to get that burn to clean up. And it does it fairly quickly. So that's a bonus. Even if you mess up, it's really easy to get that knife and clean up those edges. How about if you really mess up and you absolutely hate the design? Guys, sand it off. Sand it off. It's not a deep burn. It's a very uh, surface burn but very easy to remove with sandpaper. But guys, really this opens up a whole new world uh, to adding accents to your projects. Uh, if you're into wood burning or you want to start getting into wood burning or you see the stuff I do with the laser engraver and you have the ability to cut your own templates or your own stencils, this could be the break that you're looking for and this could be the tool that's going to get you to the next level of your crafting and your woodworking. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I want to thank Nikki out there at Scorch Marker for, you know, indulging me and sending me out some of these markers. I've had a great time playing with them and I'm looking forward to using them on the show here for other projects. Uh, guys, I was talking to Nikki and I just want to point out something that may be a little disappointing to some of you. As it stands right now, it could change from what I'm being told, but as it stands right now, Scorch Marker only ships to the US. They only ship to the United States. They made an exception for me and sent it to Canada, but in general, they only ship to the US. So if you are outside of there, like Europe, Canada, etc., etc., one of the other viewers that watches my show, sorry guys, you're going to have to wait till Scorch Marker expands to international shipping. But if you're in the States, you've got a great opportunity. I'm going to post the links down below so that you can look into it and get Scorch Markers for yourself. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click the bell and then you're not going to miss the notifications of future episodes of the program. Guys, I hope that you've enjoyed today's content. I hope that you're going to look into Scorch Markers and get some for yourself because honest to goodness, uh, it really was pretty impressive. It's a great product. And guys, more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another
Alternative Tuesdays.